Hi. You may be thinking, why should I care about the World of Tanks game modes? I only play pubs all day. Well, pretty much every World of Tanks game mode is more fun than pubs. Additionally, these modes often have very nice rewards. Credits, bonds, equipment, even a free tier 8 premium in one case. Great stuff. So, do you want to be the best at every single game mode in World of Tanks? Learn new and never before seen strategies to decimate the casuals? Then you've come to the right place. Who am I? I'm the Steel Hunter champion of course, but I have also mastered all other game modes as well. In this video, I will discuss in depth how to be the best at Frontline. I would like to note that Wargaming often makes small changes to these modes, mainly Steel Hunter, so check the comments for my pinned comment describing anything that has changed. First, I'm going to answer the question, why should I play Frontline? Mainly. 800,000 credits a game. Frontline is a fantastic mode for grinding credits. Next, what is Frontline? Frontline is a 30v30 on a huge map. There are respawns and repair depots. There are attackers and defenders. Attackers need to capture the zone before moving on to the next zone before getting to the objectives. You can't drive onto the next zone unless it's been captured or you will be killed. If you are defending and lose a zone, you must leave within a minute or you'll be destroyed. Three out of the five objectives must be destroyed for the attackers to win. You can penetrate the side of the objective with decently high pen rounds, but the back is the easiest place to penetrate it. And little secret, the vents can be penned with HE rounds. That's right. Always shoot HE into the vents at the back to deal max damage and destroy it as quickly as possible. The defending team must fight back the attackers until the time runs out. Simple. There are levels you can go up as you do damage and gain XP. The highest level is General, and this provides an XP and credit bonus to any damage you do once you receive the General rank. So it is in your best interest to get the General rank as quickly as you can. I will teach you how to consistently get general every game, and usually you will be the first one to become general too. Let's begin. The very first thing you must do, even before playing a game, is pick a selection of good tanks you will use. My recommendations are BZ-176, Skoda T-56, 7032, LT-432, EBR-75, KPZ-07, The Shit Pack, TS-54, Progetto-46, Borask, and similar tanks. You want to go for premium tanks so you can make more credits. The general rule is no slow tanks. The frontline maps are huge, and if you're too far from the fight, you are just wasting time. No bad DPM tanks. You need sustained high volume fire to be able to fight your way to the top. Tanks, and especially autoloaders with long reloads, are just begging to be overwhelmed and killed. No camping TDs. If you waste time camping at the back in a sniper tank, understand that not only will it be the most boring experience of your life, but you will also not level up nearly fast enough. No scouts. You can play light tanks with good guns, like the LT-432 or the EBR-75 but no even 90s or bulldogs or stuff like that. You do not need to scout in frontline. Do not waste your time. Pick tanks that have some special ability that can give you an advantage, mainly auto loaders, because that way you can trade shots better. Next, frontline gives you access to certain consumables like RD strikes and whatnot. You get to pick which ones you want before the game starts. The special perks you want to pick are minefield, engineering, and field repairs. These are simply non-negotiable. Not only are these abilities insane on their own, but all other abilities are trash. I will quickly go through the shitty abilities. Artillery strike. It can be useful, but most of the times you miss or it does nothing. Air strike. Can be useful against paper tanks, but most of the time does nothing. Recon flight. It's usually useless. You really don't need to scout in a mode as dynamic as frontline. Sentinel. Completely useless. Do not ever use this in any tank, no matter what. Smokescreen. 
can be useful in niche situations, but in most situations, it's useless. Inspire is not bad, however, there's a much better alternative. And in case you don't know, you can only select one out of each column, and Field Repairs is just much better than Inspire. Now, let me explain why these three perks are the best by far. Landmines. Never has there been such a powerful and effective way to hold off an entire flank from pushing. Landmines can give you enough time for you to escape, or reload, or get you that extra bit of damage and XP long after you have died. Again, this is non-negotiable. If you are in a 1v1 and have landmines, you win. Engineering. Every single thing that helps you level up is improved with engineering. You either capture bases faster, or you reset bases for longer, or you can block the capture altogether if you're in the cap circle. The repair depot's cooldown is reduced. If an attacker is trying to capture your base, and you have engineering, all his capture points are blocked and they now go to you instead. This is important because capture points level you up a lot in frontline. But let's look at the alternatives anyway. Recon flight? Pff, nah, that's not useful. Sentinel? Are you joking? Take engineering or you're a clown. Field repairs. Why anybody would choose fucking smoke screen over field repairs is beyond me. If you have field repairs, you literally win any 1v1 encounter. It also acts as a second repair and med kit. If your repair kit or med kit is on cooldown, field repairs will do the job for you. That's insane. Do not ever pick anything other than field repairs. There's a reason why Wargaming made these perks cost the most to unlock. They are the best by far. And when I say cost, I mean every time you finish a game of Frontline, you will get a few tokens, and you can use these tokens to unlock more consumables. Anyway, let's talk about equipment for your tanks. Do not use vents. Take vents off every tier 8 you own. They're fucking useless and I don't want anybody arguing with me about this. Plus, every time someone on your team gets a general rank, the entire team gets a 1.5% bonus to their crew skills. This stacks too. If there are 10 generals on your team, everybody gets 15% to their crew skills. Vents are useless. Do not take them. Instead, try to fit your tanks with hardening and turbos if they can. The turbo is obvious. Frontline is a huge map and you need to go faster. Hardening is also very useful. It can keep you alive for longer so that you can heal up and make it to a repair station or use field repairs. Additionally, you get already striked and air striked and even landmined a lot so your tracks will be constantly damaged and destroyed. Hardening increases your tracks health and also makes it so that when your tracks are repaired on their own, they repair to full health, not to the damaged state. This is insane. You must use hardening and turbo if you can. And I say if you can, because I don't recommend sacrificing like something like vert stabs on tanks that really need them. However, on most tanks, make an effort to put hardening and turbo. Fuck vents. You will never notice the effect of vents on your tank. You will 100% notice hardening or turbo. With all that said, let's uh, get into a game. Now, first things first, ready up a heavy tank. I don't understand why people start with TDs or light tanks. The beginning of the game is a big corridor slugfest. You need big strong heavies bashing their heads in the cap circle. The game has just started anyway. Why on earth would you want a light tank? To run around the one small square you have access to? Don't worry. The map extends later on and the game becomes more dynamic and then light tanks become insanely powerful. But before that, light tanks are a bad choice. A bad choice all the time are tank destroyers, mainly camping tank destroyers. They are useless. They are useless for attacking, for obvious reasons. I mean, you're attacking, so what good is it being at the back? But also, they're useless for defending. The way the cap works in frontline is that you need to kill the person in the cap circle to stop the capture, not just shoot them. A tank destroyer at the back of the map 
is the second worst thing a player can do in frontline for their team. The worst thing they can do is play Artie. Never play Artie. Ever. It is unbelievably useless. Seriously, 40 second reload to do what, 300 damage? Are you kidding me? If you ever play artillery in frontline, you are essentially down a player. Never do it. Okay, so you readied up a heavy. Now what? Play aggressively. I'm not saying YOLO win and die instantly, unless you want to respawn on a different flank, okay? There's a reason you might want to respawn on a different flank. I'm saying play the damn game. If you are attacking, go push the cap or go push a flank near the cap that is important. If you are defending, you must throw your tank away if it means you can kill someone on the cap. Why? Doing damage and spotting can level you up, but capturing a base gives you an insane amount of points. The more capture points you gain, the more you level up. Look at this. I captured the base for a while and I leveled up two ranks. I skipped captain and went straight to major. Alternatively, if someone killed me when I was capping, all the capture points that would have gone into leveling me up goes to them instead. They would level up two ranks just for killing me. They might die for it, but shit, they just leveled up two ranks. Fight, fight, fight. Go get yourself stuck in. I see this shit all the time. The enemy is capturing our base. And our simpleton shitters are too afraid to go and reset it. They're afraid of fighting in a video game that you can respawn in. Think about it. Let's do a little thought experiment here. It looks like all is lost and you're about to lose the flank. You have two options. You can either rush in, kill someone who is capturing, gain a huge amount of points, die, and respawn back into a position to defend the next capture, right? So you killed someone in the cap, but you eventually died, and then they eventually captured your zone. So now that you've died, you can spawn further back to protect the next zone. Or you can do what the average shitter does, give up, don't even try, gain zero points, and waste time driving away from the flank. That's right. They see that, oh no, we're running out of, we're not going to be able to defend, it's all over. We need to uh, evacuate the zone immediately. What? The person who went in and died ended up respawning back at the location the shitters are trying to run to. I effectively leveled up and teleported back to a safe location at the cost of one respawn. The games where I reached general long before anybody else did, within like the first two or three minutes of the game, are games where I am defending and I go fight to the death at the cap circle, using landmines so they don't swarm me, field repairs so I can stay alive for longer, and engineering so I can block the cap circle for longer. Meanwhile, my shitlord team is camping at the back because they think all is lost, and I'm over here leveling up like crazy. People usually have a preference, attacking or defending. If you're very good, both can be really fun. If you can push back the attackers past your cap circle and to their spawn location, you can literally spawn camp them and you will level up unbelievably fast if your team manages to pull this off. Oh, look where he spawned. My God, just spawned Bro, somewhere else. It's best done in a platoon. Alternatively, attacking is great because one person, one person, that could be you, can win the entire game. I will show you more on this later. But imagine that 30 people in this match, huge match, tons of people, tons of objectives, and you are the reason that you won the game. And it's not as hard as you might think. Okay, let me introduce you to the maps and where to go. If you spawn somewhere else, feel free to play aggressively, and when you die, respawn in the recommended area. The first map is Normandy. Play on the C flank. If you are attacking, go up the bridge and farm below before dropping down. If you are defending, play around the corner, but if you can, and this is risky, you and a bunch of other teammates 
push hard down the path under the bridge and try to get up onto their side of the bridge. If you can, you will absolutely decimate the attacking team. I've shown this in a video both attacking and defending. Follow this path, it is the most effective way to progress through the flank. I will go into more detail about the maps later, just have a good long look at this map and try to remember the good paths. Good attacking paths are shown with red arrows. Good defending points are highlighted via blue circles. You may notice, for attackers, a lot of the strategy revolves around actually fighting past the cap circle. So you fight and drive past it, you don't just sit in the cap circle, but you keep going pushing the enemies further back into their territory so that our team has a little more breathing room to cap. For the snowy map, all the flanks are decent. However, the best one by far is C. This side is fantastic for attacking and defending. For the desert map, there's really only one side you want to go down, and that's A. This map is a horrific sniper shit camp fest. And A is the only side of the map where you can play without getting farmed by campers. It also helps that objective 1 isn't too hard to take. It's also worth pointing out that, as a defender, once you lose the zone, you must leave within a minute or you will be destroyed. Except, you won't. The zone will drop an arty strike on you, but if you have a lot of health, you can survive it. And once it's done, then it's actually okay to drive back into the red zone. Use this knowledge in light tanks to get behind the attackers. Alternatively, as an attacker, you only need to capture one of the second capture circles to open up the rest of the map. So you can cap either D, E, or F. Once any of these three are captured, you can drive up to any objective. There's still a reason to capture all of the zones though. Every capture gives your team more time, and time is the enemy as an attacker. But this leads to hilarious situations where one side captures both, opening up the rest of the map, while the other two flanks are stuck in a stalemate. A light can traverse the entire map and destroy the objectives by themselves because the enemy's spawn points have not been moved back far enough yet. You are literally deep behind enemy lines, and if you are quick enough, you can destroy two objectives before someone respawns back there to get you. The thing is with replays is that the timer on the top right is incorrect. They're actually running out of time. So I'm going to explain to you how the overtime works. They have a minute 28 overtime. What this basically means is that the timer on the top right actually reached zero. But because they were in the cap circle, the game gives them an extra 1 minute 30 to cap. Now, if the timer runs out, they lose. If they leave the cap or die and there's no one left on the cap circle during overtime, the game immediately ends. So as you can see, look, there's some people here. They're still running out of time, but I think either the timer runs out or they all die. So they got an extra minute and 30 to capture the base, but they were not able to. So the game ended regardless. There you go, that's how overtime works. Okay, with this quick overview out of the way, I'm gonna show you some key positions in depth that I like to use to get general every time. All right, so at the beginning of the match, I just wanna show you something real quick. This is a very cool trick. You see how I'm rocketing? Okay, watch what happens when I drive through this. I just got back two rockets. I effectively gave myself six rockets to get into position. So. When you're inside there and you start repairing, use the rocket before you finish repairing and you'll get an extra one. But anyway, I spawn on the, on the really shit side, right? B, where it's just shit campers on every side. So I'm just going to YOLO in and die. I don't care. That was a nice shot by me. I know I'm, I'm a pretty good gamer. 
But, um, so I'm going to try and make it to this position. This is a pretty good position, assuming you've got allies, but... <clears throat> Let me just pause it here for a second. So the attackers have all rushed to the cap circle. You see this? They're, they're playing the objective. What's our team doing? Okay, they're on the fringes, shitting and farting on that side and shitting and farting on this side why um to no one's surprise we're gonna lose this in a few seconds and i don't care because if my team is garbage then I, i'm gonna move to a different flank there we go spawned at a and th that's the main the main thing i'm not saying like purposely throw your tank away to die even though that's what i did but the fact that i tried to push that position and it didn't work out because my team are on the fringes, camping. It was just not going to be a good match, right? So, let's just go like this. Now we've made it to the city. And check this out. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. They're capping. And I've made it in here. And I'm going to probably take one out. Look at that. And pretty much for the rest of this replay... It's going to be me pushing up to their side, as you can see on the map, and falling back when it gets too hot. So, you'll see. There you go. This TS5 is in kind of a dangerous position, so I'm going to fall back to here. There we go. Now I've got a nice little hull down. There. Eventually, when we take this guy out, we can push up further. But as you can see, on this side of the map, this team is actually playing the objective. So as you can see on B, it's over on B. They've already capped it out. I don't care. I'm not uh, committed to that part of the map anymore. So one thing I'd like to mention is that as an attacker, if you've got like maybe five guys and you're trying to capture a zone that has like 10 people on it, you know, there's no chance that you're going to cap out. You're grossly outnumbered. Just leave. Literally, just leave. The reason for this is that... Oh, actually, before that, I put this landmine down. Check this out. Push halted. Yep, it's that easy. Controlling an entire, like, flank just with landmines. But... Anyway, what I was going to say... Oh, by the way, look. I notice it's getting too hot for me, right? There's too many people here, so I'm just going to leave. So I leave. Get into this. Start capping. There we go. And then we lost the zone, which is fine, because I was already a one-shot. I couldn't handle it. But let me just pause it here for a second. I'm already on major, just by going to the best flank and playing aggressively. But anyway, what I wanted to say was... If you're trying to attack and there's too many shit campers, there's just too much, you're, there's no hope of capturing the base, just move to a different flank. Like, I'll put up a little graphic, right? Imagine this. Everybody on the B flank just leaves and goes to A. Now all the defenders are just sitting around doing nothing. Whereas all the attackers have grouped up and are gonna just blow through the other two flanks. So... Yeah, don't be afraid to switch flanks. I mean, you have respawns, okay? You don't have to bash your head on one little corner of the map over and over again, which quite often people just love to do. Okay, I'm going to show you a really cool replay. This is basically what I pre previously highlighted, okay? We had a lot of people spawn at A, and we just pushed really hard, and we basically just went to A, D, destroyed 1, 2, and then 3. Just full force. It says this entire team was fantastic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed it up to 16 times and just show you the map and how everybody played out. So look at this. As you can see here, A doesn't have much people. But as soon as we start getting a lot more people, watch how fast we just nuke them.
Look at that. That was insane. We basically destroyed one and two, like, just like that, within seconds of each other. And that's my point. A lot of people on flanks B and C were probably like, God damn it, I can't do anything without getting sniped by a bunch of tank destroyers. I'm gonna go spawn at A, where there's a lot of cover and buildings. And man, did we just blow through that whole flank. I'm gonna rock it around, do that little trick through the cap circle, or the repair circle. And we're actually gonna play, or at least I'm gonna play very aggressively. Maybe not at first, because if you look on the map, I'm kind of alone. Um, yes, I'm a BZ, so I can just do what I just did there <laughs> and get away with it. But now that I have less health, I'm going to come back, you know, repair. Like I said, by the time you need the repair depot, it'll be off cooldown. Once we soften these people up enough. And look, now we got a whole bunch of people with us. I'm going to go move up now. Check this out. Look at the map. We're actually pushing all the way to their side. We're going to start spawn killing them now. I, I think I showed a clip where I was spawn killing. It was me and Finesse. That was pretty funny. Although that's quite hard to do to get that far up. But yeah, now that we've like, we've controlled this side of the map, even though we're defending, pretty much everybody on our team has moved up. Like they understood that to win any mode, defending or attacking, camping does not work. What does work is fighting and fighting hard. So yeah, check it out. By the way, you will periodically get points, like, as you level up to Lieutenant and Captain and all that. Simply just by holding this land and not letting them capture it. Anyway, not much really else to say. I mean, we've pushed to their side. We're farming the crap out of them. We're leveling up like crazy. Because, you know, they keep spawning. And look, guys, listen. I'm going to slow down the replay. If you're attacking and people have pushed up to this red line, like you're, they're literally spawn killing you. Don't spawn here. Look on the map right now. Go spawn at F. It's out of render, but it looked like for a second they were capping it. So it looks like they're doing well there. Literally, go spawn somewhere else. Look at A. Look how much people are invested on the A flank. If you spawn anywhere else, you will not have to deal with us. Isn't that crazy? I mean, look at E. They got a whole bunch of people and they're probably going to take it. But yeah, to all the others, you know, to the rest of all the people that want to spawn here and get spawn killed, then, uh, well, have fun, I guess. And there, I eventually died. And it actually looked like at A, people started leaving A because they weren't getting any kills. There wasn't anybody left. So now they're actually going to take A. And uh, yeah, I'm. If you if it looks like I'm confused right now, it's because I spawned in a KV-5, even though I didn't want to spawn in a KV-5. And as you can see right here, you can abandon your vehicle by holding J. So, that's what I did. Anyway, spawn back. I actually spawned back at A now because it looks like there's actually quite a few people here to farm. So, we actually... It's funny, we all left the flank and that convinced them to spawn back at A to take it. But yeah, it looks like I died there. Uh, it got a little too hot for me. And... Our team actually reacted pretty well. We recognized that we were not doing anything at A, and we respawn at E and Objective 5 to defend. Like, look at that on the map. We're, our team is actually doing a lot of good work. So anyway, spawn in the LT because now the, the whole map is opened up, basically. And now I can start just driving around and harassing people. Uh, if there's an arty on this flank, rest assured, I will take care of him. Okay, so... I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just showed with the rockets, alright? I just used three rockets. Okay, I used two. I have two left. And then you'll see, watch. I'm going to have one left, right? Use it while in it. And look. I now have four rockets again and I'm boosting. So I'm got, I got more rockets to get over this bridge. And yes, it does put your repair depot on a cooldown. But it's only for two minutes thirty when you have engineering unlocked. Actually, it's less than that. I don't have engineering unlocked, but... Yeah, so by the time I'm gonna need it, it'll be ready. But anyway, get to this position. This is the best position. Don't go to the far back over there where all those mediums are. It's just a shit camping, you know, sniper fest. And as soon as you get lit, you're just gonna eat shit and die, so... Yeah, there we go. Just doing doing good damage. And now check it out. These guys are, like, gonna try and come around over there. Which is good. This is actually a good play. However, being up here allows me to counter it. So, here we are. Doing good work. And eventually, I'm just going to pause it right right now. They're all running away now. 
I mean, okay, the Skodas are one shot. He should repair, but they're all running away. Why the fuck are they running away? But you're going to see, we're going to get into the cap circle. There you go. That renegade got into the cap circle. Now, I don't usually drop down until I've killed everything around here because I'm not going to give up this very good position, if you know what I mean. But yes, there you go. Put landmines there. Now they can't even come back to reset. So, you know. Okay, good job. Um, to be honest, when you're defending this side, this is the best position right there. Going over there is a, just a waste of time. And going under the bridge can work, but it's risky, right? So, anyway, there we go. There's one person left. I think I get some bullshit here, if I don't, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that didn't pen. Oh, well. It really doesn't matter. We're going to capture this. There you go. By the time we've captured the first zone, I'm already captain. Just because I went to the correct position, survived, did damage, dropped down and started capping when needed. There we go. Next. When you go uh, onto a repair zone, make sure you're not spotted or else people will try and drop strikes on you and reset you. And if you get reset in the in the repair depot, the cooldown is like four minutes or something ridiculous. But yes, as you can see where that EBR is, I would not recommend going that way. First of all, you're at the corner of the map, so you have the least options for shooting. And two, there's a lot of shit camping TDs. I like coming this way instead. You can shoot that side and shoot that side. Anyway, here we are. Now here's the hard part. Ideally, you want to do it in a BZ, but basically you just want to rocket across this entire field. It's very risky, and you will probably die. Well, maybe not probably, but there's a high likelihood that you could die. However, if you've got other people coming with you, the chances are way, way better. But basically, once you get to under this bridge, it's basically over for them. They they really can't do anything about, about you here. So as you can see, look, our team is like full force right to the F. Look at that, capping it. Beautiful. I love it when people don't camp and actually play the game. So we go, still fighting, fighting. Uh, I didn't cap this time. I figured it would take too long to get down there. But uh, there you go. Eventually, I think I die here. But yes, once you kill this or capture this zone, the five cap or the five objective is actually pretty hard to take out. However, the four objective and the three objective are not very hard to take out because it's in the city and you won't get like sniped from across the map. But yeah, anyway, eventually here I die because don't have much health or anything. And then I spawn in an LT432 and I, I think uh, I can make it to one of these and take them out. I think that's exactly what I do. So if you look on the map, I'm going to go to the side that doesn't have people defending it, right? So look at that. D and E are not captured. So all the enemies are at D and E. However, we've captured F. So all the enemies are at the objectives for four and five and three. So I'm just going to go to this one. There's an Astron coming, but uh, I'm still going to do good damage to this. And because I'm much faster than them, I'm just going to go ahead and skip right to here. I do a, a bit of a fumble with my driving. Oh, well. So we'll just do that. And I died. And I didn't even get to put one shot into the objective one. But that doesn't really matter because check it out. Look at all these people that are back here. Do you notice something? All the people that were at D left and came back to one. Now look at D. We're going to cap it now because they've abandoned it. So it's really a lose-lose for them. They either abandon D to protect their objective one and then they lose D. Or they ignore objective one and defend D and then their objective gets destroyed. So that's what I, I meant by when you're attacking, you can basically win the game every time if you know what you're doing. So there we go. I'm general now. We just captured D. And uh, yeah, there we go. We've got lots of time left to take out all the objectives. And uh, I named this replay Insane Cheese on 1. So I don't know what I did to Cheese 1. But I know that if you sit here and load gold, you can you can take this out. Especially if you got landmines here. And then nobody can YOLO you. But yes, uh, if you sit right here, you can take out 1. And landmines will allow you to do it. But of course, eventually your landmines will get, you know, will run out and then you'll die and whatever. And, but it doesn't matter. I mean, look, that's on a thousand health left. So, 
Oh, I think I know what the, the cheese is. One thing you could do, and I recommend the shit pack because of its reload, right? Uh, load HE and shoot the side. So, yeah. This is a cheese, for sure. Yep. If you really, really have to take it out. Okay, to be fair, I didn't need to do this. But let's say there's one objective left that you need to destroy, right? Before the game is won. But it is filled to the brim with people. You can't just switch flanks, because that's the last objective. You have to take it out, right? Well, <laughs> you can do this. There you go. Objective destroyed. Uh, that was the last one, so the game's over. So, there you go. That's how you cheese one. Uh, there's also other objectives you can cheese. I'll show them later. Okay, interesting. This replay is called Insane Cheese at 5. So let's see what it is. Of course, this may look like the same replay because I'm doing the exact same thing. Or at least I'm going to the exact same position, which you should. Uh, I lost half my health, so I'm going to quickly um, use this. And like I said, see, by the time I need it, I'll be ready. But anyway, let's, uh, let's just speed this up. Come on, we've already seen this. Yeah, 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 I'm in a BZ, and so I'm nuking everybody. Nothing new. Hey, Karis, why don't you do this in a tech tree tank? Uh, no, I don't think I will. So, going up the exact same path we did before. Alright, let's see. Yep, this time I make it. And then, usually around here is where you die, because the concentration of enemies gets quite intense. Anyway, playing the LT432, I spawn at E, because it looks like we're about to cap E, and I want those sweet, juicy capture points. So let's do it. Um, it looks like the HUD is broken. I don't see my allies or anything. <laughs> oh well, doesn't matter. So, let's see, uh... There you go, I captured it. I don't even know how much points I got, because it's not going to show. Okay, I'm captain now. Okay, so me and this Barask are trying to sneak in and destroy this thing. Let's see if we actually do it. Um, I wonder if I go back in the replay. It'll reset all the, the name plates. Let's try that. There we go. I Yeah, it did fix it. But now the uh, replay is lagging a little bit. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So here we are. Me and this Barask are going to take this out behind enemy lines, as you can see. There we go. And uh, it actually looks like, you know, <laughs> aside from the average LT432 gameplay, which is just like, you know, doing whatever the hell you want. There you go, died. All right, so this is where I load the shit pack. Let's see what I do at, to cheese this. There's two ways. You can heat it from the sides or just HE it. Let's see. The shit pack is probably the best tank because 330 heat and it's accurate and it's fast. So yeah, get a cheat, idiot. Let's see, can heat pen it from this distance? It can. We're going to take this out pretty quick now. Uh, by the way, if you hug a wall, uh, Artie Strikes does almost nothing to you. Like, look at this. I took 114 in an open-topped vehicle. So yeah, hug, hug the wall and you won't... You won't take so much arty strike damage. So now I'm like, I could totally end the game right now, but let me just farm this IS3A a little bit more. <laughs> Actually, I just let it, I leave it now. I proved my point, you can end the game early. Uh, I'm probably not general, which is why I didn't take it out. Let's see. Uh, is it going to show? Maybe, maybe not. I decided I want to take this out now. I've had my fun at one, left it on 250 HP. So, I want to get general. And uh, there you go. I'm ignoring this guy. I'm just going to take this out. And there you go. I just took it out. So yeah, that's the cheese at 5. Okay, now we are at uh, whatever this map is. The winter map. I'm going to do my little trick of rocketing through the repair zone. And I'm going to push straight 
to this point right here. There's a little hull down like thing here. Unfortunately, I'm kind of alone here and this Udes thinks he's cool. Like, okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend straight away going to the middle. It's just, you're just going to get eaten up way too much. Even more so than how I'm getting eaten up right now. But yeah, anyway, I don't really like this side of the map. I prefer C. So I play aggressive. If I die, I die. Whatever. Don't care. And uh, there we go. I die. So I spawn at C. C is the best for attacking and defending. And uh, what you basically want to do is bounce both your shots on obsidians. Because, yeah, for some reason they have armor. Uh, bounce four shots on an obsidian. And I get so mad that I YOLO him because I'm a vet. Remember? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, look, we've pushed up now. Uh, it's safe to push up now because we've got a whole bunch of people in the cap circle. And we got people over there covering our rear and shit. So... All right, so as you can see, I'm following the path that I laid out, trying to sneak onto their side. And uh, you can cheese one, sort of, but uh, for some reason, you this repair depot right here, you could shoot it from here, which is interesting. So you can sort of use this for armor. And if anybody wants to YOLO you, they get shot by your teammates, assuming you have teammates, but you know, this world tank, so you probably don't. But anyway, yeah, look, I can take this out pretty easily. This guy, you know, the shot went into his tracks because of course it did. So I don't mind if I die here. So what? I'll just respawn on a different flank. Try to push it. This flank is pretty heavily guarded. So I don't really want to break this camp. Uh, let's see here. Where do I spawn now? Okay, I spawn here and I'm going to do the funny. So this is the funny. Yep. I'm going to cheese it. It's going to take a very, very long time. But the point is that you can do it. <laughs> so yes, it's not very fun gameplay, but it's effective. And uh, yeah, there you go. The game ended. So I'm in a BZ and this time I'm defending. So defending is, it can work, especially when you... Later in the stage of the battle, you can ready up a light tank and just start trolling people. Uh, yeah, that missed for some reason. I don't know what it is with obsidians, bro. They're just kind of kind of busted, but... I come up here, die. Okay, don't care. Let's load up. I'm going to go to this flank because I don't like that other flank. Why not? Let's go to this flank. I try to make it around here. Probably die. Uh, let's see. No? Actually, I, I make it up here. So that's pretty good. I'm going to have a good game now because I'm up here. Let's see. Oh, they're going to try and push back. So this might lead to my demise as that's a lot of them pushing up there. Renegade, BZ and an Obsidian. And, you know, <laughs> apparently Obsidians are my arch nemesis. I decide to get to this side so I can place landmines. So let's see. All right, let's speed it up. I'm tired of waiting. There you go. Landmines. That guy actually notices the landmines and drives around them. So there you go. He's paying attention. Oh well. There you go, I spawn on the, uh, in the LT432. And look at that, I'm driving in the red zone. Why am I driving in the red zone? Because I want to get around them and behind them and farm them from behind. Now, this replay is called Bullying in Frontline. Because apparently I start bullying someone. I don't know, one of these people I start to bully. I think I was in VC or something and somebody's like, Why don't you just focus this guy for the rest of the game? Wouldn't that be funny? And because I'm toxic, I was like, dude, that would be hilarious. I'm going to totally do that. But the point is, you could just sort of patrol the back around here and get people by surprise. Is it this Lynx that I take out? I don't know. I don't know who it is. Basically, every time this person respawns, I go and hunt them down. I know it's going to be... I think the next one is a Borsig. It's the same guy. Let's find out. Okay, no, it's this guy. Okay, so I first killed him back there. He respawned in a Ferdinand, and now I'm going to take him out. Uh, let's see what he respawns in next. Okay, so he respawned in a Roomba. And he actually bounces this shot, which is just hilarious. So yes, I'm, I'm just bullying this guy for no reason at all. But the point of this, I think I've said it already. You can go back and just farm people in the ass. Now I will admit... It's not the fastest way to get general, but it is fun. 
Uh, I think this is, is this the same guy? It is. Okay, Dr. Jet Jethro Bodin, whatever. This guy's probably very old. So, there you go, landmines. Take this guy out real quick. I, surely he does not have more respawns left. But anyway, this Lorraine gets himself <laughs> in landmines. He also dies. And uh, yeah, of course, if you're not taking landmines, then uh, you're not very good at this game. I wonder if he's back. I think he is back. Let's see. Yep, he respawned in Artie, which I just quickly took out. And now eventually, enough people get over here such that I die. I think this is where I die. So there's a Primo Victoria. I don't have any healing or landmines available. And then boom, surrounded and killed. But anyway, as you can see, I actually got general just by driving around and taking people out as they spawn. So that's something you can do. Okay, so I actually spawned at A this time. So this is good. This is the best part of the map or best side of the map. So going to come to this corner. I like coming to this corner. Fighting these enemies. If this corner gets too hot. You can always go around where that T-34 is. Which is, I think, exactly what I do. Take that guy out. There we go. So, heal up. We're about to cap, so I think I'll just join the cap circle for a little bit. Get some points. There you go. Do a little trolling. You know, I'm playing a BZ after all. So, BZ-176, I always start with it because it's got rockets. That's honestly the main reason. Got rockets and HP, so I can really push a flank and hold an objective or capture an objective. So, there we go. By the way, doesn't this skin just look fucking amazing? Yeah, that's right. You should go on my website and get this skin right now because this thing looks pretty badass. But anyway, me and this KPZ are going to YOLO number two. Since, uh, well, look at the map, nobody's back here, and why not? Let's take it out. Then little Artie, take out the Artie. And, uh, here we go. I'm gonna take this out. Eventually, someone comes after me. Let's see. Yes. I actually flip my tank. Yep. I flip my tank right here. And this flip lost us the game. Well, apparently it also crashed my game, but it lost us the game because by the time I respawned, the timer ran out and we were not able to destroy the objective. So yeah, there you go. Okay, so we're attacking on C on the winter map, which is very good. This is a great, this is the best part of the map, C. So here we are. I like to come up here and just shoot people as they come up. Um, you can sometimes get sniped by TDs back there, but other than, the, other than that, it doesn't really matter because you could just go back to this and repair. So. Here we are. Let's get some nice damage in. You want to really soften up the enemies before you head over to the cap circle or else you'll get overrun. So eventually, I deem it safe enough to get up here. And of course, you can get shot by mediums and shit back there, but we got a Mars over there. Hopefully that are going to distract them. And there we go. We've just captured this this out. So I don't I'm not going to actually drive into this just yet because I don't want to get lit and striked. So, as you can see, I hugged the wall there, and... Next! This is great for attacking and defending. So you can come up here and play this corner. And uh, if you want to defend, you can actually... Let me just free cam it. Park your tank right here, and you'll be immune to strikes. Like, arty strikes and, and all that. Here's a different replay showing you the position I was talking about. So, first you do your damage, of course, but then you can... Hide on this corner right here. And when you get airstriked, you will take far less damage. Now, I'm stupid and I put the landmines there. I mean, it does fuck up a light tank, which is pretty funny. But it's not going to stop the horde of shitters that are about to kill me right here. So, yeah, a bit of a misplay. Had I placed the landmines there, I would have survived for much longer. But yeah, anyway, this is a good position to take for defending. Unlike all of our team over here, just camping at the back. So, yeah, common, common uh, theme. You may have noticed that camping at the back means you lose but nobody was there so here we are we're gonna go and fight on this corner i 
I may have pushed that Barask out of the way, but you know, this is frontline, so quit camping and start playing. So we're gonna cap this out. Let's see how much points I get for capping. Uh, 50 points right now, maybe 60. There you go. We went up quite a lot for Captain. So that's pretty good. We'll all heal up. And now we're gonna take the long way around. Now, I love defending on this map when I get to spawn and park my ass on top of this. I will show you a replay later where I do that, but it's pretty hilarious. Anyway, assuming nobody's there, what you can do is just drive on over this way. You know, squishing them up, soften them up a bit. And there you go, you have access to the objective. You can just take it out right now. Looks like I died. Now check it out. If you look at five, there is a shit ton of people there. I'm not going to spawn back there. Look at E. Look how much people are going there now. And look at one. There's nobody here. So fuck it. I'm not going to go fight, you know, a bunch of camping shitters. I'm just going to come to this side of the flank and take the easy route. And there we go. We have access to this. Literally, look at the map. They were all at five. We all left five and went to one. Now we're going to take out one. We're just basically one step ahead of them at all times. And uh, actually, that was that was game. That was it. I don't even think we took five. But yeah, point is, if uh, one side gets too heated, too hot, too hard to push, just spawn somewhere else. So check it out. As you can see on the map, that zone is flashing. The timer just ran out, and it means I can't drive in here or else I'll be killed by their arty strike, right? Well, 700, but it doesn't actually kill you. See that? So you could, if you really wanted to, just sit there and eat the shot and then heal up. But uh, yeah, there you go. I'm going to take this guy out real quick. I don't have landmines because it seems like this is when Frontline first started and I didn't unlock them yet. Oh, there we go. Already spawned, got instantly killed. You know, you'll love to see it. And uh, we actually got a few people back here. Look at that. Actually getting in behind them, repairing with their own repair depot and shooting them in the rear. All right, so on C, when you're defending, the first thing you should do is just attack. Look where I am right here. It's straight to this corner. This is a great corner, especially if you have backup. You can basically get general here. I have in the past gotten general just at this corner right here. Because with landmines, you can hold it and be just unbelievably difficult to dig out. The best is when you've got some people on the flanks keeping their heads down. That way you can play like this and... Uh, not be harassed from the sides. Yeah, let's uh, speed it up right here. Eventually, this side will clear out this side. And then look at this. Look where I'm at right now. This is very bad news for them. This is going to be very hard for them to dig out. And look, look how far we've pushed up as defenders. You just love to see it. People that play the game. It's great. Now we're going to repair using their own repair depot and we're going to hang out right here and just shoot and take them out. Take out Artie. You'll love it. Ram this guy. Yeah. Just being an overall menace. And look, we basically control this entire side of the map now. The point where I'm going to come over here actually and get some nice damage in. It got to the point where I'm looking back here and I'm like, hmm, we're actually not... We don't have that much people left. Okay, it eventually gets to the point where I notice back there. Look, holy crap, we're running out of people. So I eventually notice, holy crap, we're running out of people to defend and they're actually making a counter push. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. First, I'm going to place landmines right there and try to hold this position for as long as I can. Now, we've got some people camping back there, unfortunate. It looks like a lot of people actually left this flank to go somewhere else. Uh, oh well. But uh, yeah, look, I'm already major, and if I had a little more teammates, I probably would have gotten general back here, but... Yeah, let's just do that. There we go. I spawned in a 
turtle to defend one. Which worked. Got general. But now we're at this stage where I'm in a very slow tank and there's nothing left to shoot. Maybe not quite yet, but around, yeah, around now. And now I'm like, okay, I'm just going to abandon the vehicle. This is a big waste of time. F, we're losing F, so watch this. This is just great. The getting to this position is fantastic. Although in this replay, I don't do so well. Mainly because, look on the map. Me and this Borsig are the only people here. Which really sucks. Because this Borsig really needs to be back there. This position is great. Because people will go around, try to YOLO you, eat landmines, and then all your TDs that are camping, take them out. But anyway, I'm going to speed it up. As long as you hold the wall, look at that, 38 damage from air's already strike. As long as you hug this wall, you won't take any damage, or very little damage. So, as you can see here, place landmines. I take this guy out. And of course, I die here. No great surprise. But, look how far these people are pushing up to be able to shoot me. These people back here, they really needed to be up here about a minute ago. And they would have had the farm of their life. But, oh well. I'll see if I can find a replay where I'm up here. I think I may have lost it, but I'll have a look. Now, I've, I've picked the TS-54 because it's got gun depression. And it's got a nice double shot mechanic. Although, to be fair, it's because my I think my Skoda and BZ were locked. But anyway, this is the position you take. This is a fantastic position for just trolling the shit out of enemies. You shoot them as they go across in their side, and then if anybody tries to get up, you landmine it. Although, I don't actually place landmines just yet until this other guy shows up, I think. That's probably the idea. There you go, landmines. Now, if this guy wants to attack me, too bad. So, I'm just going to free cam it real quick. Look at this. I am so dug in, and my team are shooting them as they come in. Isn't that just... This is just amazing. Also, this dead tank was giving me cover for, for a good long minute there. But yes, there you go. This is a very, very good position. And as you can see, all my landmines are gone there. Because enemies were just eating them up. Eventually take this guy out. This uh, Iron Army has no clue. And look at this defender. He's actually going to join the fight. And uh, I think this is actually the replay where things get really spicy and really cool. One problem with the TS-54 is that it doesn't actually carry much ammo. As you can see, I've only got 10 shots of AP left. So, maybe don't take the TS-54. Uh, pr probably take the BZ because it's got 10 degrees of gun depression and you can rock it up here. Anyway, yeah, here we go. It's just uh, boom. Let's speed it up. Maybe I'll just free cam it up. I actually come all the way down there to place landmines. This guy does that. Oh, it seems like I've died. Oh, well. Anyway, I'm going to rocket back up here in the BZ. Or... No, I'm not. I'm actually just going to shoot these guys. Then I'm going to get up here. And there we go. I'm in this nice little dug-in position. Yep. Oh, look at that. Look at all these people that are coming now. Now, I'm desperately waiting for my... Uh, Okay, that, that wasn't a good play to, to drop down like that, but... Yeah, I'm desperately waiting for my landmines to come back up. And as you can see, with two people, you could basically hold this entire flank. Literally. To the point where I think... Yeah, look at that. I'm going to pause it. They've all ditched five and went straight to one. Because this is just way too hard to dig out. And it's fine. A lot of people complain like, Oh, that position's so overpowered. And it's like, dude, just go spawn somewhere else. Really, it's that easy. Just go spawn somewhere else. But uh, yeah, look, that's uh, what a what a great position that is. And look, we won. OK, so I'm on this side of the map. I'm just going to go ahead and say usually you want to either play on here or go to that corner over there. But mainly this spot right here, if you have armor, will allow you to just sit here and block the capture, especially if you have engineering. So I like to sit over here and then eventually I'll go around this corner and shoot somebody as they cross. So, oh, this is a good spot right here. Alright, here we are. We've pushed up on this side. And like I said, pushing up, repair, and mainly play this building right here. Because you can't go up any further. And as soon as people try to YOLO you, 
Landmines. There you go. Easy peasy.